So good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, satsang and guided meditation. Um, let's just do a quick check in and we'll start with Vanessa. Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, great to be here. I had a great week. Um, I like to think now what I did. I don't know. I had a great morning that I can tell you. I went for a run early. Um, so I'm full of happy endorphins. And I'm seeing my daughter and her boyfriend later. So we're meeting for coffee and I haven't seen her in ages. I'm very happy about that. Um, and it's, yes, it's just a nice spring day in Joburg. It's a beautiful day. I smelled jasmine this morning on my run. So oh, that wow. just, that made it for me, yes. So, yes. yeah, here I am. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Anita. Hi, morning all. Um, yeah, I've had a bit of a hectic week with uh, friends having got COVID. And, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Looking forward to meditation this week. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I've had a good week, I think. Um, and it has been amazing weather. I must say, we've just had one brilliant, beautiful day to be grateful for after another. So it's really been fantastic. Wow. It has. Awesome. Um, yeah, nothing really otherwise to report. Just glad to be here and looking forward to the satsang. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Maria. Where's Maria? She's muted. Mute. <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. All right. Um, also trying to work this out on the phone. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I had a much better week than I have had for the last month or so. So it's good to feel like I've turned a, a corner health-wise and I've been able to do much more. So... I like being able to do more. <laughs> yes. So it's been a good week as, um, yeah, as you've said, also good weather. So everything all in all has been a better week. And I just found last week to really have been a good session. Uh, just I felt like a lot was achieved last Sunday um, in our session. So it was good. Thank you. Wonderful. And so nice to see your face. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you. Mickey. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, nothing much. Okay, we actually can't remember. It's just these days is like one long day. Mode. Yeah. <laughs> but good. Glad to be here. Good, good, good. Okay. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so, uh, um, after last Sunday, I, had just, uh, I, I was just sort of overly stressed and overly everything and um, <laughs> felt like I was uh, um, hanging on a piece of thread and um, luckily I found a place. Uh, Barbara helped me. She was my eyes in Durban. Uh, she had a look at the place for me um, and I uh, signed the lease. The first time I haven't looked at a place and signed the lease, <laughs> physically seen it. <laughs> so there's a first time for everything. Um, but, and I've uh, gotten some quotes uh, for the removal companies and I finally got one that's reasonable because uh, the others was just, uh, uh, yeah, just way over the top. Um, and it's like, Yesterday, when it was the 1st of August, and it's just one month, yeah, it was like such a relief, such a, such hope, optimism that coursed through my veins. It was just very, very, very nice. So I'm in a better space, uh, knowing that I just have to do one more month. <laughs> and uh, we'll finish up whatever I need to finish up here. Dot all the I's, cross all the T's, uh, finish all the contracts, uh, and um, uh, super, 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 super excited to uh, be um, 
moving uh, down and then having my base there. And the satsangs uh, will continue. It will continue through August and it will continue go, go beyond September because um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it will just be, I'll, I'll just see more smiley faces hopefully from me and uh, um, I'll show you my view and yeah. So um, yeah, um, so I'm in a much better, better space, uh, which I'm grateful for. <laughs> um, uh, it's like, I think after I signed the lease, it felt like the, 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 the piece of thread that I was hanging on just broke and it was like, okay, but I fell on safety. It's like, and I know where I'm going to be. So at least I've got a starting point. Um, just starting over again. So, yeah. So welcome to you everyone and uh, today when I look through the decks of cards of uh, which one I'll pick messages from I thought seeing that I'm going back to the sea I'll pick from uh, the dolphins and mermaids deck oracle deck and um, I was surprised to, to draw this card it's protection and then I wasn't surprised anymore <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's a message for you too, Anita, and for all of you, but especially, um, and uh, it is uh, just a mermaid holding a little babaki and uh, it, it says, you and your loved ones uh, and uh, your possessions are safe and protected by heaven. And I'll read uh, the message to you. So it says, your prayers are... Uh, uh, which asked for safety and protection, have been heard and answered. Any attacks or threats are now a thing of the past, washed away with uh, the tide of a uh, heavenly love. This love is clearing away your insecurities so that you can feel totally secure. When you ask heaven to watch over you, your loved ones, your home, your possessions, um, yeah, your prayers are instantly answered. There is no hesitation or delay on heavenly on heaven's support. It's uh, done as soon as you ask. Your energies uh, can be now directed in meaningful ways and creative ways, which uh, your um, uh, with your mind clear of worries. Enjoy your day. <laughs> so I can uh, relate to the message because I've been asking for to be safe and protected, um, especially after this ordeal. Um, and uh, it's like there was a little fear coming up uh, with the big move and everything that came up. But I, yesterday was just, I felt that wash of just peace that everything is just going to be okay. And sometimes we need that, um, that trigger from spirit to, to say, hey, you've asked for our help. It's, uh, you will get it, you are safe. Everything will, you'll be, everything will be okay. So um, I hope you all receive this message well. If you want to say anything or add anything to it, uh, does it resonate with you? Are you taking it with you? Yeah, can I just add something there? I found much of July to be a time where I just felt very unsettled. Um, and I haven't specifically prayed for protection literally for years. And I felt the need in July to do so quite regularly. And I found, I mean, I've got nothing happening that's at any particular time. But I found exactly the same thing yesterday. And I actually didn't even realize until halfway through the day that it was the first of the month. Mm -hmm. I just also kind of woke up to this, something's passed now and okay, it's okay. I can breathe now. It's all right. So yeah, I could identify with it hugely because I haven't prayed for protection specifically for years up until July. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that means something for me. I'm very grateful for that message as well. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anita. Absolutely. That's exactly what I've been wanting to hear. So thank you, Fee. And also your uh, post on the August energy 
in the uh, portal chat was really brilliant. Uh, guys, you must read it. It's, um, it's really fantastic, very uplifting. So it's something to look forward to um, in August. So we've yes, turned yes. around the bend. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Yes, it's it's it's, it's it feels like some kind somehow a cycle has come to an end, whatever the cycle is, and um and and we can step forward um with with grace and with ease. Righty. Okay, and then I asked her, uh, Vanessa to draw us a card uh, this morning as well, because uh, she was busy playing with the cards. So. so um, we can we can do with extra messages and <laughs> and I think Fiona, you you're going to enjoy this one. <laughs> it is the uh, wisdom of the golden path. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and the one I drew is don't compromise. True wisdom stands the test of time. And your decision not to compromise on something you truly believe is a wise one. Sometimes soon, there's a magical occurrence. And through a series of unexpected but interrelated events, your world changes for the better. This is all a direct result of the strength and commitment you have shown towards something you believe in. You will soon reap the rewards and your strength and strong commitment will serve both you and others well. What was previously rejected will soon be accepted. And your affirmations there is true wisdom is what I feel through the heart of love and true wisdom stands the test of time. So you go. Wow. Beautiful quote. Very appropriate and I accept. Anybody else uh, taking that card? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. I think we'll take, uh, I'll ask you to send me a photo of that. Um, uh, beautiful affirmations so, and um, confirmation. So, yes, yes, yes. We'll take that. And it is, uh, it, it is about don't necessarily compromise uh, a certain, especially the core values of who you are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like it's uh, it's been so nice so when I did um, voice on Facebook that I'm coming back to Durban. It's like I just get yays, and um, like the two clients that I had uh, the past two days was Durban clients, and they were also very glad uh, that um, I'll 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 be there. So um, I'm happiness is now. Because uh, just walking in the direction of all that brings me happiness. Okay. Yes, um, No, you've unmuted yourself. You've muted yourself now. Uh, sorry. Uh, when Vanessa was reading the card, I was actually thinking about you, and um, and you sent me that long list this week of requirements <laughs> that you wanted, and I thought, wow. She doesn't want much for 5,000 random. It's going to be possible. <laughs> but you were, you, you did, and you, you didn't compromise and you got it. And, and it really is a lovely little place and it is absolutely unbelievable for the price. So, yeah, so I completely understand. Don't compromise. Just go for what you really want and, that's what you, and believe that you're going to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. So today um, we're again reading one of uh, um, the parables of Brian again, and this time number six. And um, my the property that I'm going to be in is number 51, which is a six energy. So I thought, okay, six, six, cool. Because uh, six in its positive meaning is a uh, humanity at its best. It's a uh, humanity reaching its highest potential. And uh, my whole focus is to help people reach their highest and greatest human potential. So um, very, very nice. So uh, this parable brings a lesson to us and it's uh, for you to just uh, be reflective of uh, what it is for you because it's individual for each of us. 
And uh, the parable is uh, Sarah and the old shoe. The author's note is, ready for the really short one? I love this parable because uh, it represents uh, how I think uh, some of the time. I can uh, really relate uh, to um, becoming comfortable with almost anything. Why change if uh, things are working? What? You tell me it isn't working? That's silly. Okay, and the other uh, parable starts. Sarah was a new age enlightened woman. She understood uh, how to take responsibility for her life and that uh, she was to find her reason for being on this planet. Sarah, therefore, asked her guides how to go about uh, finding her sweet spot, the place uh, where she agreed to be, and uh, they gave her good information. She understood the process and set about uh, to co-create uh, what she knew um, uh, was her passion. Sarah wished to be part of uh, e uh, the ecology of the planet to help her with improving the earth and all who lived on it. She threw a window of opportunity that suddenly appeared a coincidence. Um, uh, she was given uh, the chance uh, to do just that. The opportunity came in a form of a job within a company that uh, she worked with high-end ecological systems. Something uh, that excited Sarah greatly and made her feel that uh, she could make a difference uh, for many people. A new job uh, would uh, take her across uh, town each day to work uh, in a comfortable office uh, where she could accomplish uh, her life's goal. This is uh, why I'm here, she acknowledged. I have uh, such a passion for this. She was elated and peaceful. Everything was working out fine. <clears throat> as uh, she started uh, the job uh, except for one thing you see coming into this incarnation on the planet sarah was given the fear of small places in order to get her job uh, get to her job it was necessary for sarah to ride the subway train and it uh, uh, and uh, she was paralyzed twice a day by this experience each morning, she would enter the subway and uh, would slowly um, fray uh, in her own fear. She, um, she would be anxious, gripping the pole with uh, her sweaty hand, and her heart would pound uh, for the entire 25 minutes it took to travel to uh, this wonderful job. After a month, Sarah came to her guides uh, and uh, painfully admitted, this is not working for me. I need to find another job. Her guides asked her, how can this be? Didn't you, you co-create uh, this exact situation uh, that you've asked for? Isn't uh, uh, it, uh, is uh, this uh, not a victory? I can't continue going to a job because of my fear of small places, replied Sarah. It spoils my entire day twice, uh, two times, coming and going. Sarah, her guides suggested, how about if we eliminate the fear, not the job? I don't know, Sarah hesita uh, uh, hesitatedly said. Um, I've had this fear of small places for 35 years. I've only had the job for a month. And uh, so you see, Sarah was comfortable with her fear. Like an old shoe. It was somehow like a friend. A known quality. 
something that uh, was always there. And just uh, like an old shoe, it might be ugly and tattered, but uh, she had worn it for so long that it was uh, the last thing she felt she could change. The end. I told you it's a short parable. <laughs> <laughs> this author's postscript is, again, this is a true story. Sarah is real and the fear of small places, the job and the, the problem is real. You will be pleased to know that Sarah walked into her fear and to this day, she resides, uh, she rides the subway train in uh, um, joy and in peace to her wonderful job. But uh, there was a time when uh, she doubted it couldn't happen or that it could happen, she would say, what? This uh, psychological problem is always been here. How can it ever leave? This uh, is uh, too much to ask. Sarah finally decided uh, that the job was more important uh, than her fear. And she found uh, to her amazement that her intent to void uh, the um, a claustrophobia was honored by God with almost immediate results. Just as her mind uh, had uh, uh, set up to create a fear of uh, enclosed spaces, her mind also had the, the setup and ability to avoid it. And uh, uh, she took control of the situation and did exactly that. What a concept. So it is uh, to reflect in your own life to see what shoes, all shoes you've been wearing um, that has been, that you can't necessarily take forward, that has been a, a comfort zone, a comfort shoe to be in. But when we on, I was reflecting on this this morning, when we on a path of growth, things can't stay the same. Um, and it, it reminds me of what Kran says, uh, when we, we on this journey, it's uh, two steps forward, one step back. And uh, reflecting on my business also, it's expands contracts, expands contracts, uh, um, my, life my everything expands contracts con expands contracts it's like a living breathing thing we uh, expand and we contract and we expand and we contract um in our consciousness in our awareness in what we do nothing stays the same if we're on a path of growth things can't remain the same and sometimes we have to move beyond our comfort zone beyond that which feels uh, safe beyond that which feels uh, that we feel that we can do and uh, with discussing uh, things with a client yesterday it was um, certain patterns we are just so used to um, having whatever it if, if it is insecurities or not believing in ourselves or not feeling good enough or not feeling whatever it's a, that card message from Vanessa this morning is so beautiful because it says that uh, go, whatever we let go of, of what we how we've compromised, it will be replaced with acceptance. It will be replaced with so much good. So it is in our advantage to let go of the old way of what we accept in the name of love or in the name of peace or in the name of something that we hold sacred and dear and when we let go of that we can we can just experience a whole different set of um of things there will always be challenges and but it's when we walk into them and through them we realize actually how strong we are and it can be scary and it can be daunting and it can be everything um my body has been showing me how 
<laughs> and this uh, has uh, been on me. Um, but yet, still continue with setting the intent, holding the vision, being true to myself, being understanding what it is uh, that I want to go create, asking, begging, pleading, crying, <laughs> believing, trusting, all that, all those processes until we get to that stage. So, um, what would you like to share about your old shoes that you would like to leave behind today? Barbara. Yeah, I've actually dealt with a lot of fears um, since I've known you and I've overcome them to a large extent. Now and again, they come back, but I know how to, how to rationalize and get rid of them. So that's not a problem. But what, what this lady in the parable had, in my opinion, was a phobia. Mm. And I have a phobia, a phobia about spiders. I absolutely cannot be in a room where there's a large spider. I can't. I can't do it. Just thinking about it makes me feel ill. And I have tried and tried and tried to try and work out what it is because I don't like being scared of something, you know. I mean, I see, I, I won't let Mac kill them unless he's, it's so big that he can't even deal with it. But um, <laughs> normally he just gets it on the feather dust and sticks it in the garden. <laughs> I can't even do that. I can't go near it. And so the only way I thought I, I would try to communicate with these things telepathically <laughs> and tell them to stay out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> the other way of dealing with that phobia, I absolutely can't. Okay. I don't know how, how I would overcome it. I don't know how the lady in the, if she felt like that, about a small being in a small space, I don't know how she overcame it. Vanessa would like to reply. So I'll give her a first chance. <laughs> Thanks. Barbara, I, I feel you. Um, I've had a fear of spiders absolutely debilitating since I was a child. And I know that feeling, that feeling that you get, it's, I know. So I became a hypnotherapist <laughs> and I knew that a lot of people undergo hypnotherapy for phobias, but I refuse. I was not going to even consider having myself hypnotized to get over my fear because I didn't want to. And one day I did a phobia session for a friend of mine who was starting a new job um, in a place where there are a lot of spiders and she had a fear of spiders. I did the session with her and afterwards I walked out of her house and I realized I wasn't scared of spiders anymore. It was the strangest thing. The other day there was a rain spider. I still won't touch it, but I, it was in a thing and I was holding it something I could never do previously. So I do understand there is, I mean, everybody looked at me like, if Vanessa can hold the thing with a spider in it, then, so there is hope. I'm not saying hypnotherapy will work for you, but yes, it's amazing how phobias can be dealt with. It's worth a try, do you think, hypnotherapy? It is worth a try. It really is. If you get a good hypnotherapist um, in your area, it's worth a try. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I just I just was always too scared that I like them too much, that I would want to play with them and um, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't I still don't like them that much, but I I don't have that feeling, that absolute par paralyzing feeling that you get when you see one. Yeah. yeah. So good luck. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. It could be an idea that uh, you, in your meditation, uh, sit with a spider and just communicate with it. <laughs> Barbara, just entertain the thought or the idea. <laughs> I've had people where I take them in. I can't remember, but it's like they will, it will be something that they will never do and they will never feel comfortable. And then I, I, I take them in a session and I take them there and they, they're totally fine. And that fear just dissipates. So it's, we are not married to our fears and um, phobias. 
we can overcome them. And uh, the first thing is just to set the intent that you would like to. Because uh, when you have the willingness uh, and, 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 and like to, then anything is possible. It's, it's, and uh, I think this is what the parable also tries to say, is that anything is possible for us. We must just uh, set that intent that, okay, anything can be overcome. N nothing is set in concrete. We can overcome anything. We are so strong. We are so magnificent. We are so connected. So, yes. Okay. Um, Maria, want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking as you were saying that, how last week we spoke about being able to drop our karma at any point if if that's what we want and that for me has always seemed like a big thing um yeah. so i suppose if we can drop our karma we can drop our fears and and phobias um i don't know i was just thinking about that now um yeah cool okay so i want you just to to in your mind uh, yes barbara sorry one more thing talking about dropping karma from last week I forgot to ask last week, and I know it's quite a big thing, so maybe it's too much of an explanation for this, but yeah. I just want to know, how does one drop one's karma? What is, how do you do it? You're born with it? How do you drop it? How do you decide I'm, I'm not going to have any karma anymore? By just that. You see, so if, it, it, it starts with intent. And it starts uh, with uh, the power of the spoken word. And we, we say what we want and what we don't want. And uh, when everything in you aligns to that, for instance, I think the, the one guy that I listened to on YouTube a few months ago, um, he was talking about um, relationships and uh, and, and so forth, and he said, it is done when you say it is done. That the, whatever needed to play out has played out and, and whatever. And at that stage, I, when I listened to it, I couldn't say it is done yet because I didn't feel that it was done. And then in my dreams, I was shown certain things and then I realized, okay, now I got to, it is done. Um, and it is, uh, it, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's like with a, um, when I spoke to um, Colette this week, um, and we just spoke about the things that I've been through now and, and whatever. And she also mentioned that you can also feel that I've come to an end of a cycle. And it is like how I am made felt by this environment where I am now. Um, I'm choosing not to allow any human to make me feel that way. Not good enough and my well-being is, doesn't matter. Um, okay, my presence uh, doesn't matter, it is, isn't needed. Um, my light's not appreciated, who I am is, is, is not. And it's like, I am, for me, I said it is done. I am done. I'm done with the cycle. I, I will not allow another human being to instill that. It's not part of me anymore. So it is, it's their stuff. It's where they are. And do they need to stay there if they choose to? But it is uh, what I no longer accept. And uh, as uh, the card uh, that um, uh, Vanessa read this morning it's like uh, when we don't compromise our own values uh, what do we feel about ourselves uh, what's the minimum standard of you need to accept love and appreciate me as I accept love and appreciate you um, where it's a mutual thing yes there will be challenges or whatever but we, we, can, we, can, we can by our intent and uh, by going within we can just say I no longer accept this. Cut those karmic ties. Let it go. Drop it. It's it's with our intent. 
it's our attachment to it that prolongs it. It's saying, oh, but um, say for instance, uh, it's a victim thing. Oh, but I'm a victim. I've been a victim of this and uh, this, and you harp on it and you carry that and you stay in that. Then it's one, two, three, I block myself. I choose to stay here. I choose to play the victim. I choose to harp on all these things that is wrong, not take my own power back, not to step dynamically forward into where I want to be. So we can at any stage say, this is it. No, no longer. I'm no longer playing this uh, drama triangles. I'm no longer playing in this uh, arena. I, I no longer want to participate in, in this. Um, so it is by our voice, deeds, intent and actions. And the spider thing, is that a part of karma? Of my karma? It's, uh, it's, it's, you see, we, we all come with certain challenges. We are mm. magnificent. We are everything. We are part of source. We are just these beautiful beings, but we do choose to go through certain experiences and we do choose certain crutches and certain hurdles to overcome because it makes fun for the game. <laughs> <laughs> How can you um, feel victorious if you hadn't had to achieve anything or change anything or let go of anything or transmute anything? We set these things up for ourselves. And the most difficult ones uh, is uh, it, 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 um, it, it just lifts us up when we master them. It just lifts it up to, to whole new levels. Um, so it's, 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 it's a, definitely a choice of the soul. Um, and uh, what I've realized is uh, like when, when, especially when we set our intent to, to go on a, 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 to spiritually grow, we have to go through certain things, but it is, uh, it is, um, it is the way that we do or the way that we are thereafter. It is our response to it that changes it. Then it can't have a hold on us. It, it, it cause people that go through certain things, uh, that, don't necessarily have the awareness or the ability to, or, or the want or the know-how how to heal, they get trapped in that. And that uh, creates the disease and uh, the tumors and the cancers and all that, uh, which they don't actually want. But uh, they, they don't realize that, that it's just because of they're holding on to what uh, the remnants of that experience. For us, we need to transmute, dissolve and transmute, dissolve and transmute, dissolve and transmute, dissolve and transmute. It's like uh, the tar pit, not let the tar stick to us. Um, people with heavy karma, they carry that heavy tar and they just get, ah, I can't move anymore. And they, they really live in a life of stuckness and they just don't move and they become hoarders and they become whatever because they just want to they feel safe, it's their safety zone. And, but everything that we want is on the other side of our comfort zone, is on the other side of our safety zone. So it is uh, to see things more from a higher vantage point that, and, and, and sometimes our karmic um, lessons are, I wanna say minimized, that, we, it's like you just have to take a teaspoonful of that instead of eating seven bags of salt of that. So it's 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 like sometimes we just have to you just have to go through that a little bit because mm -hmm. you still need to experience something. You still need to learn something. You still need to grow. Um, and the, it can be very intense, <laughs> very very intense. Although it's a short period, but it can, it can help you shift. 
So everything is designed for us uh, to evolve and grow. But we don't have to go through unnecessarily bad karma for ever and 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 ever. And that's uh, sometimes what people think. Oh no, okay, I've signed up for this. So I have to, I, I have to compromise who I am. I have to compromise my desires. I have to not voice uh, that I actually want something. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I must be submissive. I must be um, this. I must be that because society or others uh, want you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I overcome the spider thing in this lifetime. Does that mean I won't probably have to have it in the next lifetime? <laughs> uh, definitely. Good. Whatever we transmute and grow through and and uh, evolve and develop, yeah, we don't have to experience that again. So, um, like, and, and that's why I, I, I things are on different timelines and time lengths. You go through something that's uncomfortable until you say enough now. Really? Enough now. And it's like this lady. After a month's uh, job, she said enough now. But it, <laughs> the guides wanted to, to be alerted of what she should say enough of. Like the 30 year, five years of fear of a small space, so she should say enough of. But she rather takes the more comfortable one. Uh, let, let me rather just get a different job. But it's the perfect job. So um, it's to look. Yeah, I want everyone just to do introspection today on what is those long ones, those long fears of, and it can be something that brings up insecurities of, uh, or not feeling not good enough or um, the fear of whatever it is, because mm -hmm. we have the power to transmute it today or tomorrow or in the next 10 years or in the next 35 years. However long, there's no, there's no, there's no, um, there's no push. It is, what are you ready? Which old shoes are you ready to say? Okay, let me throw it out. And when we face it, we never have to face it again. So it's worthwhile. Yeah, it is. That's that's what I wanted to check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanks. cool. Thanks, Yana. Most welcome. Uh, Vanessa, are you turn? Okay. Alrighty. Anybody else would like to add something before we start in the meditation? No, nah, cool. Okay. So I want you just uh, to become comfortable. Closing your eyes, breathing in deeply and exhaling fully. With each in breath, taking in the, the consciousness and awareness that's available to you now. And with each uh, out breath, release all that no longer serves you. In order for you to be shining lighter and lighter, brighter and brighter. And just allow this tone, this vibration, this frequency to go in, through and around your body as you just relax. Wherever you hold any tension or stress, anxiety or fear, or any disharmonious feelings uh, that has come up for you during this week, or the past month, or this lifetime, just detach, release, and let go of all of that now, for you just to drop into the body. Into your heart and feel the peace that is available for you there. And I want you just to breathe in three slow deep breaths in through the nose and out through your mouth. Expand your abdomen as you breathe in. and uh, contract your abdomen as you breathe out.
Feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed, more and more at ease, more and more at peace. I want you now to visualize yourself stepping into the most beautiful garden. Your sanctuary. The peace of place, the place of peace and tranquility that you like to go to. And before you, a path appears. I want you to follow this pathway. It leads uh, to a little cottage in the forest. I want you now to enter this cottage. And take uh, the steps to the upper level. To into your bedroom. I want you to go and uh, sit on uh, the armchair that's in the one corner of the bedroom. Asking Spirit now to make you aware of the old shoes all the emotions uh, that you used to carry, the old ways of walking upon this earth plane and how you feel, the old ways of thought forms, the old fears and phobias. And I want you to become aware of them one at a time. And I want you today to make a decision on what you would like to do with all these old shoes in your cupboard. And those uh, that you are ready to let go of, just face them, thank them, and place uh, them in a black bag. I want you to go through this process of elimination. All the feelings that, that no longer serve you, that you no longer wish to entertain. All the beliefs, all the fears, all the phobias. Just address them one at a time. And I'm going to leave you for a while as you do this decluttering and clearing. That uh, which you are not uh, ready to face can stay in your cupboard. And when you are ready, you can face it.
favor I want you just to, to be reminded of the power that you hold and that you can do anything master anything be anything I want you, when you are ready, to take uh, the black bag out, out of the house. And discard it in the, the way that you feel most appropriate. And then I want you to go back in the cottage up to your bedroom. And uh, sitting back on the armchair and looking at uh, the cupboard. Which uh, shoes would you like in the cupboard? that you have or not have yet? Which attributes would you like to have more of? Be it uh, that of uh, feeling secure, be it uh, feeling more courageous, confident, Loved, accepted, appreciated, nurtured, comfortable in your own skin. Making the maximum of your gifts and abilities. Reaching your highest potential. Living uh, fearlessly, victoriously, and 
And I want you just uh, to fill your cupboard with all that you need. And consciously on a daily basis, wear those attributes. Put on those shoes. Wear the clothing that makes you feel that way. And I want you to consciously put on the shoes and the clothes that you are ready to wear now with awareness of how it makes you feel. And each morning, before you get out of bed, when you to go into this room, and put on the, those attributes uh, that you would like to use for that day. And then start the day off carrying those energies. I want you to stand up and go to the other corner of the bedroom and look into the tall mirror at your reflection. At your beauty, at your magnificence. Shining brightly, the most beautiful array of colors. Feel the warmth within your heart, and the confidence in your stride, and with a spring in your step. Go down the stairway, out of the cottage, and we'll joyously skip, skip and jump uh, down the pathway. Feeling excitement within your entire being. of the new choices uh, that you've made for yourself. And then in your own time, you gently come back into your body, into the space, into this now, 
And then rotate your hands, rotate your feet, stretch and make sure that you're properly back into your body. And when you are, you may open your eyes. And I would just like uh, to hear what has happened in your meditations today. What was your experience? Who wants to be first? Just unmute yourself and Barbara. Yeah, it was um, it was very cleansing, taking all that rubbish out of the cupboard, and I put it on a big bonfire in the garden and burnt it. <laughs> well done. Yeah. I felt pretty good after doing that. It was, um, and I sort of got the message that I'm always, um, I'm never acknowledging my achievements. I'm always acknowledging my failings, and and I should acknowledge my achievements more. That was the message I got. So beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Awesome, yes. And that's a part of the shoes that we are carrying in our cupboards, all the failures that we've had. Um, like, uh, not uh, the achievements in standing uh, in our truth, in our power, and uh, having made uh, those choices. So, yes, fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Was uh, the phobia addressed or not yet? Um, no, not in that meditation. Um... It didn't yeah. pop up. There wasn't a spider on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Just joking. In my, dreams, in my dreams, I get them. You know, Fuck. sort of crawling around and, and yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else would like to share their uh, meditation? Uh, yes. Whoops. Where have I gone? Oh, there I am. Um, yes, it was. It was surprising. I. Yeah. <laughs> the universe, the guides, the spirits showed me something that I didn't really. I know it's a problem, but you know, I didn't owe that kind of thing. Um, it was to do with. It doesn't. Yeah. I know. I have the issue of showing um, emotion and being close to somebody and allowing somebody close to me and showing emotions. But yeah, that's like one of those things. So it came up with that issue, which uh -huh. it was quite nice. <laughs> yes. So I, I allowed myself to do allow people closer to me to show vulnerability. Yeah. Quite a surprising one. Thank you. Nice. Awesome. Woke up, a, woke up a problem I didn't really realize was that big a problem. So <laughs> thanks for that. You're welcome. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Fiona. <laughs> I'll have to uh, come to you now to, to fix it. <laughs> oh, funny. Thank you, but it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maria, Anita, you would like to add anything? Maria. Yeah, man, man was huge. I was actually for a second almost overwhelmed by the bigness of some of the stuff that came up um, and some of the links uh, that I hadn't associated. Some of the issues that I thought were totally different issues, uh, how they connected. Um, because I was looking for the other pairs of shoes, expecting other pairs of shoes on those issues, but they were just sort of really just horrid, ugly, old, damaged pair of shoes that had a whole lot of stuff to it. Um, so yeah, it was a very interesting experience. Uh, um, definitely, uh, this was a start, a little start of something that has to be um, worked on further. Um, and like Barbara, I took my bag down and put it in a bonfire fit and, um, pit in the garden so it was nice to see it burn. 
so yeah it was that was a, a really uh, very powerful meditation for me thank you so much it's very good thank you thank you yes yes it was actually quite an interesting um meditation so i had a, a bag full of it as well also took it and burnt it and hopefully with that i've dealt with some issues but i think once again i've got to revisit this meditation again there's still lots more that's unraveling and we need to get rid of so it never ever ends at the meditation though or at the satsang <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm glad <laughs> thanks you're welcome mickey you would like to add anything um not really <laughs> okay cool no problem okay yes barbara just um what we were talking about earlier on the subject of fear i yeah. just want to say i think the whole world's greatest fear at the moment is this um covid 19 this pandemic and we're all so frightened of it and um but if we understood that we are actually, all we have to do is ask for protection for ourselves and loved ones, and also the, any that we know that have got this illness, um, we absolutely have nothing to fear. And we shouldn't allow our fear of COVID. And I think the whole planet has allowed the fear of COVID to, to dominate it. It is fear that's, that's turned our planet upside down. The economies are all upside down everything is upside down yeah. and, and it's all coming from fear of one thing and that's an, a, a flu basically hmm. exactly I, yeah. I, I think i read somewhere on one of cryon's um post that this time in the future we're re reflecting back on this time it will be it will be I'm not 100% sure, but it will be known as the time where people died of the fear, not necessarily of the the ailment. It must just go, go, I'll go look for it and then I'll send you the right quote, but it, it was, a, a, it is a time of fear. Um, I don't fear this and I don't name it. Um, that's why my satsangs don't go, it's not, designed around that because I don't feel it needs any energy um, or attention or acknowledgement um, and it's like um, yes uh, things are happening but you can only focus on on yourself and your environment and rid yourself as of as much fear as whatever and I think when I did listen to one, I've only listened to one of um, uh, Cyril's uh, um, addresses uh, during this period, and this is, was the last one. And I think he mentioned uh, South Africa is the fifth highest um, rate to in, I don't know, in the world or I think in Africa, with the highest amount of positive cases but the lowest mortality rates. And for me, that just doesn't make sense. Um, so I don't know if you just sneeze and then, okay, you've got uh, this label. I'm not 100% sure of how this is now being done or if, yeah, I don't necessarily want to get into too much of the, that. But yes, for me, there is nothing to fear. Nothing yeah, to is that it's just it, everybody's fear is destroying yeah. our planet. And everybody's it's a, fear of this but, illness. Mm. Yeah, but what, all we can do is just rid ourselves of our own fears. Mm. That does help the collective. Um, mm. So it's just, and so the shoes that, that I chose or uh, to wear outside of the room walking with uh, today was comfort and it's just I want to feel comfort and we can feel com I can feel comfort but it's 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 like we have to be more conscious and aware of what we wear because we wear the emotions 
people take one look at our faces and they say, oh, damn, <laughs> what's going on in your life? Or how are you feeling? They don't have to ask how are you feeling because they can see it a mile away. But it's, it's, it's like, um, yeah, it's just for us to be conscious and aware of what we do now choose to walk out of our room with out of our house of us. Do we walk tall, confident, strong, secure, know that we are protected, know that we are um, um, just magnificent, just awesome. And who doesn't want to be with our awesomeness? Uh, it's just like uh, allow your awesomeness uh, to magnetically attract other awesome experiences and people and situations and uh, yeah, no. taboo with fears. Then you listen to this meditation again and you put it in that black bag <laughs> and you take it out. Take it out. So you just keep on cleansing, keep on cleansing, um, clearing, clearing, decluttering. Out with the old and in with the new. New can't come in if your whole cupboard is full of all these old emotions. And it gets interesting that Maria said that so many is linked to a few core ones. Um, you don't think they're related until you're shown how related they are. Um, and it is like, we just need to stay because we, we have a, a, the God particle within us. So we design our life. We need to set out what the, the rules of engagement is going to be, how we would like to play this, uh, this, this game and preferably with a smile and a hop and a skip and a jump and with elation, it is available. Okay, no, no carrying this big bag of old shoes <laughs> on your back. <laughs> Don't wanna see any of you with old shoes. <laughs> and if there's one or two that's, uh, that's a memorabilia, <laughs> then I guess you can um, have a look at it, it's like, uh, last week when I went through the photos and, and stuff with the kids um, uh, there was a uh, when uh, when I was in corporate I d went for art classes because I needed to do something creative just to balance out <laughs> the energies and um, I drew my dancing shoes because I love dancing I love dancing so much in any case I I wore those shoes to get all, they nearly fell off my feet. I, I really danced very well in them. Um, and I, I drew them before I discarded them. And, uh, and Nadine also said, oh, that's one of her favorites because she knows how much I loved it. And, uh, and I guess that that's what I want to leave you with. It's like, if you do have an old pair of shoes, it must leave you with feel good feelings. Oh, that was a good run. I ran with I ran with those shoes uh, so much because uh, they gave me so, so much um, feel good endorphins or whatever it is. It's like um, only and and that's what I realized with the good going um, through the family photos uh, last week. It's like um, I, I was holding on to albums and albums of photos. Really, it, it came too heavy. So as I went through the albums with the kids because we just selected all the feel-good photos <laughs> and I didn't I wasn't aware what wasn't feel good for them because Nadine would say oh although I was smiling in that photo I can remember this and this and this happened on that day and I felt uh, this way and uh, whatever and we don't realize that subtle triggers that the stuff that we hold on to actually makes us feel a certain way and it's to be very, very, very much aware of whatever you still have makes you smile or makes you feel good. And whatever doesn't, better leave your household. Very swiftly, very clearly, very directly. So uh, use it or lose it. <laughs> okay, anybody else would like to end off with anything? A last thought, word, action. Okay. Well, I bid you the most magical, magical, magical week, day, and uh, look forward to connecting with you next Sunday again. Thank Lots you. Lots of love.
Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.